Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here the ATI T's study manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 100. And 55. We are on page 93. On page 93 you will see a list of basic geometric formulas, basic elementary geometric, geometric formula, rudimentary uh, formulas in geometry. You will see a list of them on that page, page number 93. And on that list, the very last entry that you see there is what we're going to talk about right now, the area of a rhombus. Let's begin, shall we? What is a rhombus? Do you know what a rhombus is? A rhombus is a kite. You know the kite, the kind you fly? That's what a rhombus is. Kites are rhombus shape. A rhombus is like this. You have two segments. Let's call this diagonal one. These are called diagonal. What's a diagonal? Diagonal is where if you have a if you have a square, this is a side. From going from here to here is a side. But if you connect the two opposite points, this is called a diagonal. Same thing, if you have a rectangle, this is a diagonal. If you have a pentagon, five sided picture, let's say. If you have a pentagon, what are the diagonals? Well, you have to connect the opposite thing, right here from here to here. That's one diagonal, from here to here, that's another diagonal, from here to, from here to here is another diagonal, from here to here is another diagonal. There should be one more, there is from here to here is another diagonal. Those are called diagonals. Diagonal is line that connects the opposite points. So you can have two diagonals. One, a short diagonal. What are we doing? That's right, we're making a kite. A kite is made up of two diagonals. Two diagonals that are not equal to each other. One a shorter one, one a longer one. I did not do a very good job because this top half from here to here has to be equal to this top. So one more time, let's give them names here. Let's call it A, B, C, and D. And let's call this O first. B to O, B to O must equal O to C. Tell you what, instead of calling them O, O, o is going to confuse us with zero and let's not call them a b c d let's call the center c c for center and let's call them p q r s so from q to the center q c the requirement is that that distance has to be equal to center to point s that's the first requirement and p to c has to equal this distance has to equal c to r in other words, you cannot have something that I drew a second ago by mistake. You cannot have something like this. That's not a rhombus. It's going to make a nice kite, but it's not a rhombus. Rhombus has to be like this. And then you join the lines. And if you do that, in this picture, you will see that we have two diagonals. Let me first redo this line. I don't like it. You will see that we have two diagonals here. What are diagonals? Diagonals are the lines that join opposite lines. That join opposite point rather. So where are the two diagonals? Well the first diagonal is right here. P to R, that's your first diagonal. Let's call it D1. Where is the second diagonal? The length of the second diagonal, we're going to call it D2, and which is from Q. S. That's your second diagonal. Let's make a note of it here. So we have, we have two diagonals. Our second diagonal, D2, is Q to S. Q to S. This is S. How do I know it's S? Because it's P, Q, R, S. And where is the first diagonal? The first diagonal was the red one. The smaller one, P to R. P to R. These are line segments, these are distances, so we have to put a line on top. 
That's why we indicated. But the question is, how in the world do I go about finding out the area of this bloody thing? How do I find the area of a rhombus? How do I find the area of a kite? That's what we have to figure out. Let's do it together, shall we? I need the room so we can erase all of this thing. And the trick is this. Trick is always the same. Trick does not change. Trick is always the same, which is, if you cannot manage something in life, a huge task that is given in front of you, and you cannot manage it, what do you do? Well, you break up the task that is uns seems unsurmountable, insurmountable. You break it up into small pieces, and you do it bit, bit by bit. If you have to read a huge book, book, but don't look at the huge book as one unit, and say, oh my God, how am I going to read this 400 pages? Well, tell them I'm just going to read one chapter a day. Be done. You, you get the idea. Same thing here. Instead of looking at Instead of looking at this whole thing in one shot, let's look at triangle B C R. Triangle B C R. Let's draw it here. There is the C, point C right here, that's your center right here. That's the point C. That's point Q, that's right up here. And that's point R. If we can figure out the area of this triangle, that will help us a great deal. Why? How? Because we must realize that this rhombus is made up of four equal triangles. These are all the same triangles, each one of them. Triangle, well, I was going to call this one, let's call it one, two, three, four. We're looking at right now triangle two. But if we know the triangle area of triangle two, we know the area of the other three triangles because they are all equal to each other. So if we can somehow figure out area of one of these triangles, all we have to do is multiply that quantity by 4 and we'll have the area of the rhombus. We'll have the area of the whole kite. Let's do, let's do it together, shall we? It's very simple. You know how to find the area of a triangle. We have done it many times. The area of a triangle is simply 1 half base times height. 1 half area of a triangle is simply 1 half base times height. The question is, how do I figure out the height and how do we go about figuring out the base? Here is the base, and here is the height. How do we do that? Well, how much did we say from S to Q was? Q to S, we believe, was D1 or D2, doesn't matter, it makes no difference. Okay, if I call it the other way around, don't, don't, don't get your knicker in a twist. Yes, that's what I said, you understand? Don't, do not get your knicker in a twist, it makes no difference. So if I call it the other way around, don't worry about it. So that's Q to S is D2. How much is Q to C? Well, if Q to S is D2, then Q to C must be half of that. Done. So now we know Q to C, which is this part right here, which is the height, which is the height right here. D2 over 2. We're going to put it Let's put it here, one half base, which we haven't figured out yet, times the height, which we just figured out is d2 over 2. Let me write it a little bit better, d2 over 2. Well, what about the height? Well, that was the height, wasn't it? We just figured out q to c, q to c, that is the height. That's, yeah, that's the height right here. Let's figure out the base. Base is this right here, this is the base from C to R. Let's do it here. C to R. How do we do that? But well, we know P to R. P to R is D1. Well, if P to R is D1, then C to R is half of it. That implies that C to R must be half of that. That's your base. Well, we have it. We have the area of the triangle PCR, PCR, the area of this triangle, let me erase this arrow part so that I can box it. Right here, that's the area of one of those triangles. And we have four of them. We have four of them. Therefore, therefore, the area of this rhombus, area of this rhombus, must equal
4 times this quantity. 4 times this quantity, which is 1 half times d1 over d2, sorry, d1 over 2, half of d1, half of the length of the first diagonal and half the length of the second diagonal. We're almost done. I see 4 on the top, and if that bothers you, when I say 4 on the top, think of this 4 as not a 4, but 4 over 1, if, if it helps you. We have 4 on the top, and I see 2 and a 2. 2 times 2 is 4. So we can divide top and bottom by 2. We divide top and bottom by 2. I could have used this 2 and that 2, but I did it on purpose, these 2, so that we can see it's 1 half times first diagonal and the second diagonal. That's it. The area of this guy is simply... The area of this guy is simply one half times the length of the first diagonal times the second diagonal. All done. And that's what you see in the book. That's what we see in the book. Now let's put in some figures and let's do a problem, shall we? I need the room. We really need the room, so or we can simply do it here. We are told so the length of the first diagonal is 8 cm and we are told the length of the second diagonal is 10 cm. What is this area? Oh, it's very simple. It's 10 times 8 times half. 10 times 8, 10 times 8 is 80 and half of that is 40. That's what it is. It's half times 10 times 8. If you divide top and bottom by 2, 2 goes away and 10 becomes 5, 5 times 4 is, 5 times 8 is 40, 40 squared centimeter. Why squared centimeter? Because everything is measured in centimeter. One more time, length of the first diagonal we are told is 8 centimeter, length of the second diagonal is 8 centimeter, 10 centimeter, 8 times 10 is 80, we want half of that, half of 80 is 40 centimeter, 40, not centimeter, rather 40 squared centimeter, and which is what you see in the book is the very last entry in that table. Very last entry. Except the example that they give you in the book, they use a different numbers. I'm using uh, the num different numbers on purpose so that you get two different problems. By the way, I noticed a, a, a printout. Uh, I just I just noted a misprint on this page and the previous page, which I forgot to tell you. And I'm going to share with you these two mis uh, uh, misprints for whatever it's worth. So, let's erase this thing here. Let's put it here. These are misprints. Even though the first version that they came out with, which had a red cover, which you will see in the beginning part, if you start with day 101, in the beginning videos you will see me holding a book with a red cover, which is also the 6th edition, but they pulled it out of the market, pulled it from the market because it has too many misprint, they corrected all the misprint and they came out with this one. But this bloody thing still contains misprints, I just found two of them. Page 93. On page 93, on page 93, I'm going to show it to you instead of, instead of just telling you, it's the very last entry where it talks about rhombus. It's not a big deal, it's trivial, but it bothers me. Very last entry in the table where it talks about rhombus. Right here, at the very last entry, very last part, last line, it should have said 4, not 3. It should have said 4. The second diagonal is 4 centimeters long. Second diagonal is not equal to 3 centimeters. The second diagonal is 4 centimeters. How do I know that? How do we know that? Because if you look at the calculation, it talks about 1 half times 3 times 4. 1 half times 3 times 4, second diameter is 4 centimeters. But in the line above it, it says first diameter, first diagonal rather, first diagonal is 3 centimeter, and they're going to tell you the second diagonal is also 3 centimeter. That is wrong. It should have said 4 centimeter. Second misprint I found was on line number 92, or page number 92, the previous page, which is also very trivial, but it bothers me. It bothers, it, it hurts my eyes. I'm going to show you where it is. In this picture here, in this picture, where we are figuring out the area of the, of, the, of the thing, at the very end here, when they have the result, it says that the area equals, it says, 
Let me erase all of this part so we can write something. Let's, let me erase all of this thing. On page 92. It says, so finally it says that the area equals 32.42. 32.42 It cannot possibly be the area because then it would have been two misprints it's not the area, it's the perimeter it could not have been the area because had it been area they would have needed the unit squared and the unit, and the unit is not squared it says 30, 33 33.42 feet 33.42 feet strictly speaking if you're going to be Stigler that is wrong that is incorrect you cannot claim that the perimeter is exactly this many feet, we can only claim the parameter is approximately 33.42 feet because in order to figure out, in order to come up with this figure, we have to insert a value for a pi and the, regardless of which value you use for pi, whether you use 3.14 or 3.1416 or the scientists and the astronomers in the astronomy uh, and, and when they're sending out the spaceship and so forth, they use the value of pi all, all the way up to the 20th digit or 50th digit. Doesn't matter how many digits you go, it is always an approximation because nobody knows the value of pi. It is an approximation. It never ends. So if you're going to use 3.14, it is no longer an exact measurement. It should have said the parameter is approximately equal to 33.42, not exactly equal to it. It is wrong, strictly speaking. It hurts my eyes. It hurt my eyes when I when I was reading it. I feel much better. I had a nice catharsis. I didn't even have to lie down on the couch. And I didn't even have to pay any shrink. I feel much better. Thanks to you. Bye now.